is our Wednesday show. Wednesday we look forward to because Wednesday brings our buddy, that sexy fool, dominated the KGO Airways. He's a student of political history and presidential history. And when it comes to San Francisco and Bay Area politics, he knows that like the back of his hand. He's the great John Rothman, everyone. What's up, John Rothman? Everybody's great. Delighted to be with you. And, of course, a lot to talk about. So let's yeah, get Yeah, and to we should uh, get first, I think, into uh, the ruling in the Trump case, because I know we, we, you, you talk a lot about Trump and his danger to uh, this democracy and to government. Uh, this is something that kneecaps him from the standpoint of his business. I don't know how it will affect his politics. Can you give us a moment on this? Yeah, well, his whole reputation was built on the basis of his business as a human. And of course, this is a shattering blow. The court chose to rule essentially that he lied and he is now going to have to face the consequences. The fact that he will be stripped of licensing, I believe he will be stripped of his licensing in New York, cripples the Trump enterprise in New York and does a tremendous blow to him. Of course, Mark, remember, it's all a conspiracy mm, to yeah. stop Donald Trump from becoming president again. Yeah, but I always, have news for you. You know, yeah. your little studio there, uh, you know, it's worth quite a bit of money. But did you know it's really worth about, oh, $50 million? Did you understand that? Because of all the brilliance and the technology and your brand, your brand sure. brings I mean, it to I mean, so you're ridiculous. referring to the fact that th the specifics of the case, which essentially suggests that he inflates the values of things to get loans and he deflates the values of things and undercuts the values of things uh, when it comes to paying taxes and insurance. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and he will pay the consequence. Look, here's the point, though. Will it affect his political operation? The answer is no. If I were on the stage tonight, the Republican debate, I would ask each one of the candidates one single question. Do you believe that Mark Milley should be executed? Because that is what Donald Trump said. Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, should be executed. And then we had one member of Congress, Paul Gosar, who said he ought to be hung. Where are the Republicans? And that, to me, is the litmus test issue tonight. I will be watching at the Ronald Reagan Library uh, to see whether or not the host of people posing the questions will ask that simple question should mark milley be executed i just want to know their answer i know what chris christie will say chris christie will say donald trump is unfit to be president and absolutely right and if you listened carefully to the discussion over the new book that has come out cassidy hutchinson's book uh, and if you listen carefully to jake tapper's almost hour-long interview yesterday uh, what was amazing is she is a conservative republican she was a true believer she says Donald Trump should never be in the presidency. If I were in charge of putting together the ads for the 2024 campaign, out of each one of those who have worked for Trump, stand up and say whether they think he ought to be president again. After all, this is a guy who built his reputation on a television program where he said, you're fired. Mm -hmm. And look, look at the reality here. The reality is that Donald Trump is a, is a walking disaster. Can you imagine, Mark, really saying the incumbent chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff should be executed? Can you imagine? By the way, the deafening silence from members of the Senate and the House who served on the Armed Services Committees in the respective houses, where are they? The bankruptcy, the moral bankruptcy of those who should be defending General Milley, uh, they're inability to articulate Republicans inability because they're afraid of alienating the Trump base. Uh, what good are they if they're all profile and no courage? There isn't a lot of courage on the part of the GOP to take on Trump. We saw it from the hours after J six and even in conversation that you just were talking about with, uh, Hutchinson talking to Jake Tapper, talk to Rachel Maddow. I know she's to, uh, on the book tour, but the reality is there are some revelations in that book, or certainly some reminders in the book, of how completely uh, untethered from any sort of, as you say, uh, moral or ethical underpinning the entire administration became. They all essentially enabled uh, Trump to do all of these things. And so, in a way, it's not surprising, and it's a bit depressing, that there is no check in place 
to uh, should you know. should Mark Milley be executed? That's the question. It's a very simple, very direct question that should be posed to each one of the potential Republican candidates for president. What Donald Trump did was indefensible, unconscionable, and I will tell you, immoral. And he ought to be barred from uh, the votes of Republicans. They should when, be reacting vigorously. You're, you're, when you're, now you're talking about when he calls for Milley's execution or when he says, well, they used to execute people for treason like this. You, you're saying that's what you're talking about when you say uh, yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah, percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me ask you a, a tougher. Let me press you on this a little bit. Um, it's a weird place that we are, where we need to protect the ship of state from the supposed commander of the ship of state, Donald Trump, when he was president. You have a, a joint chiefs head in Milley who essentially took things into his own hands. Normally, you wouldn't be for that, would you? I mean, you would, you know, you generally serve at the pleasure of the president, as they say. Now, let me explain to you. When Richard Nixon was in the last hours of his presidency, the Secretary of Defense sent out a memo to everybody saying, do not implement any action ordered by the White House without my signing off on it. Of course, that was completely illegal. There's no foundation for it. But you have to use good sense in politics. And uh, that is what was done in the Nixon days. There is an example of it. Uh, and uh, in the end, Nixon knew better than to abuse his power. Donald Trump says, elect me and I'll get all these guys. I'm going to put an attorney general in there who will prosecute them. Talk about the politicization of, a, of, a, of the Department of Justice. It's crazy. Well, the other thing I would just say, John, this was, I thought, such a telling moment when you talk about how the GOP won't step up and, you know, no one will say anything and Gosar makes these comments and Trump makes these comments and they sort of go orphaned, is during the last debate, and this will be the second one tonight, during the last debate, they were all asked if he is convicted, all right, this the hypothetical is pretty sharp, if Donald Trump is convicted of these felonious acts, would you then support him as the next president of the United States. Would you still support him if he's the Republican nominee and convicted of these things? Were that hypothetical to come to pass? And they all raised their hands with the exception, I think, of Hutchinson and, and Christie. That's uh, correct. And that Hutchinson would. will not be on the stage tonight because he didn't meet the qualification. Uh, but let me point out again, if I were the moderator, if I were asking the question, the one question I would ask clearly, precisely, unambiguously is, do you agree with Donald Trump that General Milley should be executed? That's my question. And let's see how these Republican candidates deal with it. Somebody's asking in the chat how to watch it. I think it's going to be all over the... No, it's first... all on Fox. Fox yeah. is covering it live. And then there will be uh, a, an analysis on CNN after the debate. But otherwise, my understanding is the only place to watch it is on Fox. Uh, John, what's going to happen with the government shutdown? It looks like it really will be uh, shutting down. And I, I think this, look, I tend to be a pessimist a bit because these guys are so crazy. I'm talking about the extreme right. But I think they could hold the nation hostage for a longer period of time than we've seen in the past. Well, I owe you and our listeners an apology. Because last week I suggested the government will never be shut down on this this score. That it would be prevented. But now I've really listened this last few days, and I'm afraid maybe I was wrong. The reason I say that is because the right of the Republican Party, the Freedom Caucus people, uh, are determined not to give an inch. So here's Kevin McCarthy's choice. He can either deal with the Democrats and cut a deal, or he cannot deal with the Democrats and the government will be shut down. But for Kevin McCarthy, there is only one issue. I believe he is only concerned with keeping the speakership in his own hands. And at what price do you keep the speakership? Look, whatever you have to say about Paul Ryan or, or other Republicans who have held the speakership, uh, you have to give them credit. They had courage. They were willing to stand up and they were willing to, to back off if they had to. Uh, Kevin McCarthy is a disgrace. And I'm hoping he rises above his own ambition 
to really react. Uh, this is uh, Paul Ryan made a statement yesterday uh, criticizing his colleagues, uh, saying they were completely dysfunctional. And he's absolutely right. Can you imagine that a, someone like Paul Gosar or a Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, or, well, you name the, 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 the crazy members of the Republican caucus on the far right, that they have the power of death for Kevin McCarthy. Uh, if I were Kevin McCarthy, I'd say to the Democrats, come on, let's work together. Uh, I don't mind if I lose my conservative caucus. But remember, he only has four votes. And when they make that motion to vacate the chair, which he conceded to his opponents in order to get their support, he left himself wide open. But by the way, you and I talked about this off the air for just a moment, but I just want people to know it's Social Security. It's the firefighters who would be cut off. It's our military that would be cut off. I mean, this is not a joking matter, and this is very serious. And even if it's for a few days or a few weeks, it is unconscionable that in this country, a few extremists in the House of Representatives can hold up the entire country. It's just absolutely wrong. It's one more thing that should change in this country. I think you need to open up the hood on a bunch of things that are possible in this country. Well, you can if you have ludicrous. a bipartisan House. Look, in the old days, uh, you had Democrats and Republicans working together. I pointed out on my podcast that Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan were completely opposed to each other on so many issues. But at the end of the day, they sat down in the White House, had a drink, and, and worked things out. Remember, it was because of Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill that Social Security was saved in the 1980s. They may have been diametrically opposed on a whole host of issues, but when it came to national security, and this truly is a question of national security, they were willing to work together. Uh, and I could give you example after example historically of how that worked. We'll see in the next few days, and remember, we're now counting down the days until a decision has to be made. Can you imagine, by the way, sending home the members of Congress on the eve of this kind of momentous moment? And that's exactly what Speaker McCarthy did. He said, okay, go home for a few days, cool off, whatever you want to do. And he left us wide open. That we was bizarre. What, what was the thinking impact. behind that, John Rothman? That, I, that really, I thought it was a bad look. You know, they're going home. Well, Kevin McCarthy doesn't, I don't know if he doesn't get it. I think he does. But I think he's only concerned with his own survival. That's all he's concerned about now. He wants to continue to be Speaker of the House. And he feels if he can get over this crisis, he'll be able to manage everything. And I don't think that is the case at all. Speaking of counting down the days, Russ says, when will John Rothman announce his San Francisco mayoral candidacy? I'm still also, seriously... Before I'm you say serious. anything, there's another. Uh, John, what's the latest on your run for mayor of SF? That's from Joseph. And I get right. many questions about your political aspirations and whether and, and the mayoralship. What's I'm the seriously story? thinking about it. Uh, Daniel Lurie just announced. Uh, by the way, he is a, a lovely fellow. Whether he has the depth is the real question. He has the money uh, and he may be able to uh, buy that situation. Uh, we also have the situation of Greg Sir, who is being actively promoted by Mark Benioff. Uh, and I'm, I've, I'm under a lot of pressure. I have to be very blunt with you from a lot of people to run for mayor. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, let the dust settle. Let's see where we go. The election is not until November of uh, 2024. We have plenty of time. Uh, but in the meantime, all the speculation, and may I say London Breed uh, is at this moment, uh, I think, the odds on favor to be reelected as mayor of San Francisco. Remember, we have a great disadvantage here in town. That's ranked choice voting. And with ranked choice voting, Mayor Breed has, if she's the second or third choice, and they begin tabulating that way, she'll do it again, which is what she did to Mark Leno when Mark ran against her. So let me tell you, all my options are on the table. I'm not making any decisions right now. Every day brings a new consideration. Let me point out, the teachers union may be voting to strike here in San Francisco, which would have massive implications. We have the whole question of the streets and how and what the mayor can do to clean up the streets. 
And uh, these are all issues that that really have to be dealt with. And I'm I'm considering it. I don't want to make any joke about it or 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 put off a decision. But I'm going to wait for the dust to settle and then decide. You know, it seems just incredible that a city beset by so many things, car ripoffs, smash and grabs, retail theft, uh, you know, problems with uh, running out of money for their for the schools, uh, as you say, facing down a, a teacher strike. Uh, this is a city beset by so many problems. It seems inconceivable that the mayor of that city would be reelected, but you just explained why it likely will happen. Yeah, and I, all I can tell you is uh, I don't wish Mayor Breed ill at all. Uh, whoever is mayor of San Francisco has a very tough time. Were I to run, I would not run against anyone but for the city of San Francisco in order to try to do what can be done to make those corrections. And I will keep you posted, Mark. I promised you I would. And uh, these are all issues which uh, have to be confronted. And by the way, all you have to do is open today's newspaper and see all the issues confronting San Francisco. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. I mean, no one wishes her ill, but it just seems as though... No, you know, people do. That, that you, you have to circulate as I do and get the phone calls I get on a daily basis from people. Uh, and so this is a very, very complex issue. The key is San Francisco. Uh, I believe in this city. I believe in its future. Uh, but if you want to rent some office space for the Mark Thompson show, <laughs> I can tell you where you can get massive office space here in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, sadly. And, uh, it, it is because you want a city to succeed. And this should not be a partisan matter. Uh, frankly, I suggested, and I really believe it to be true, that the best minds in San Francisco, past and present, should get together, talk about solutions. And whoever runs for mayor should be coming up with solutions not just rhetorical flourishes. That's exactly right. Square says, Godspeed, Mayor John. So you have some support. Uh, John Rothman, the podcast is Around the Political World with John Rothman. It's a daily podcast. And John offers you his thoughts across the political spectrum in ways and on things that you may not hear anywhere else. And so you again, can hear my interview with Mark Thompson. We post it every weekend thanks to to Mark and Albert and Kim, uh, we uh, post it. And it's amazing, Mark, how many people are interested in what you have to say and what your program produces. And I want to just urge everybody, uh, I know this is a, a pay-as-you-go operation, support the Mark Thompson program uh, because we do not have a talk radio outlet here in San Francisco, shockingly. And so to have the ability to communicate through this methodology, makes all the difference in the world. We now have over 20,000 listeners uh, to the uh, around the political world with John Rothman. Uh, and I think there is a tremendous hunger, those of you who I hear from, for this kind of forum. So by all means, support the Mark Thompson program. Thank you, uh, John. Congratulations on the one-year anniversary. Thank you. We have a little over 13,000 subscribers. We encourage everybody to subscribe, share the show. Uh, when John mentions, Albert, that he has 20,000 uh, listeners and we only have 13,000 listeners, I have no choice, Albert, I hope you understand, but to blame you. I mean, what? you're the reason. Yeah. I mean, uh, Albert, thank you. I'm just saying, Albert, perhaps you need to have a good talking with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and go, how come John Rothman has 20,000? My bad. Mark, I'm sorry. All right. Mark, can I answer the question? Yes. I don't charge. I get up every morning, I give you 10 minutes, it's no more than 10 minutes, uh, and uh, that's why we have that volume. But understand, uh, if you have what Mark has, which is uh, Kim and Albert and production costs and all the rest, that becomes a whole other issue. And these kinds of programs deserve support. They deserve support so that people have this forum. And uh, the same thing applies to Nikki Maduro. I mean, if you're, if we are going to have some vehicle in San Francisco for dialogue and discussion, uh, this seems to be what we have to do. I wish it were otherwise. October 6th will mark the one-year anniversary of the termination of KGO. And uh, let me tell you, Mark, people walk up to me all the time and say how much they miss it. Somebody came up and said to me, didn't you used to be John Rothman? <laughs> so we John, we love going. you. Stay you. Uh, stay in touch and uh, don't change a thing. Thank you for the nice words. John Rothman. See you Wednesday.
Look yeah, good. look forward to it. Wow. The Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.